Hello once again and welcome to Grim 3D. Today we are going to basically continue a project that I started a while ago with my lawnmower. Uh, my wheels were wearing out and I thought that instead of just buying new wheels for my lawnmower, I could actually improve the design using the 3D printer. It's going to be a good project. Stay tuned. So here's one of the smaller front wheels from my lawnmower. One of the problems that I've had with the wheels lately is the pivot in here, basically this plastic with a little bit of grease just runs directly on a, an axle bolt. And this plastic is actually kind of wearing out so that when you spin the wheel, it toggles back and forth like this. And as you're running down the lawn, you can see that it twists side to side and you can actually feel that it creates a little bit of extra drag on the lawnmower, making it harder to push. Now, this is not a self-propelled lawnmower at all. This is a human-propelled lawnmower, and it's a pretty cheap one that I got a long, long time ago. But I like to keep things working, and that's one of the things I do with 3D printing is redesigning stuff. I actually have a playlist titled Grim Engineering, which is what I like to call it, any of the engineering that I've done by myself to try to keep things in service as long as possible, which is, I think, a good idea. But as I do this wheel design, I want to, instead of just printing this all just the same, duplicating it in 3D printing, which I guess would be fine, except I want to make sure that I don't run into the same problem here with the plastic running directly on a metal axle shaft. So what I'm going to do is I purchased these flange bearings, you see there, bearings, okay, ball bearings, got these off of Amazon, I'll put the link in the description where I got these, uh, but as far as these bearings go, all I really needed was to make sure is that the inner part of the bearing was the same size um, as the axle on the lawnmower, because I'm going to 3D print the way the plastic interfaces with the outside of this bearing, redesign it, uh, make sure that this wheel no longer is plastic on metal, but has full sealed ball bearings front and back, making sure that this wheel spins true and hopefully has a longer life. Now, I have in fact already designed and created the rear wheels for my lawnmower, which are considerably bigger than this one. And I used the same exact bearings because it was the same exact axle shaft. The design I came up with has now been on my lawnmower for over a year, and it is running beautifully. You can actually tell on the lawnmower when you have the front wheels on the ground, it actually creates extra drag. So actually when I walk around with the lawnmower and not mowing, I actually have ended up lifting the front wheels off of the ground because this system still creates extra drag uh, that the bearings do not. So it's actually worked really well. And I'm going to go ahead and show everybody how I designed this wheel, how to print it, install the bearings, make sure all the dimensions are right, and get this on the lawnmower. Which, uh, as usual, I will be doing in Design Spark Mechanical. Love that program. Super simple, extra powerful. It's a fantastic uh, piece of software, and it's free. So um, I love designing in it. Super quick and has enough functionality that I've been able to design almost everything I've designed using Design Spark Mechanical. So if you haven't checked it out yet, you should check it out. And no, I am not affiliated with Design Spark in any way or their parent company, RS Components. I've received no money for this, as it says in the description on every one of my videos. Uh, I'm completely independent. I'm doing this with all of my own money, all my own time. I have no sponsors and no affiliations. So. Let's get to the design phase of this lawnmower wheel. So I'm gonna try and run this off two cameras. I got one that's right over here. So my um, little window with the talking head in it, I may not be focused on the screen the whole time, just uh, bear with me. So what I'm doing here is I have my Design Spark mechanical screen up and, on my computer and I'm recording that 
while I'm also recording at the same time to my YouTube camera and my webcam at the same time. So I got three input sources going here and I just need that so I can switch back and forth. Hopefully uh, it'll be okay. Uh, everything will be fine. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop playing here and I'm gonna play over here. Um, I need some basic dimensions off of this wheel. So some of them don't have to be too exact, some of them have to be pretty exact. So the first dimension that I'm gonna grab is I'm just gonna grab an overall diameter. So this wheel, and you know, this wouldn't really have to be exact, it would just change the, I mean, there's nothing that's going to get clobbered by extra uh, inches in the diameter, but um, it would change the level that my lawnmower is mowing at. So I think I'm gonna call this because there's a little there's a little curve here, so I'm looking along the curve. I think I'm going to call this a six and three quarters inches tire because there's kind of a curve on both sides. So six and three quarters inches. So then I'm going to go back to my Design Spark Mechanical and I'm going to draw a circle and just start in the center of my drawing plane. And I'm going to do 6.25 inches. And Design Spark will convert that to millimeters for me if I put in the inches uh, indicator. So 6.75 inches becomes 171.45 millimeters. So I don't have to convert that myself. I can just type it in. Design Spark Mechanical will do it for me. Next measurement that I'm going to grab, I'm going to grab an overall width on this tire. This overall width here is one and three quarters inches. So I am going to pull this up 1.75 inches. And there I have the basic layout of my tire or my wheel. The issue that I have here is now is that first of all, I need to get the bearing embedded in here. And there's three, basically three measurements I need to be really concerned about. So on the wheel, I don't have to be concerned about the diameter of this hole particularly because this is handled by the inside of the bearing. See that? But I do have to be concerned about the outside of the bearing and this flange so that that embeds in the plastic properly. I don't have to worry about these spokes yet or any design out here. I just have to worry about this dimension, this diameter on this bearing and these measurements here for this flange and this thickness so that it embeds in there properly. The second measurement I need to worry about is you'll notice that if you can see that on the camera, the bearing on the wheel here is recessed. So you can even see the end of my finger there. So the bearing itself is going to need to be recessed on this side, but on this side, you'll notice that it is extended a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some measurements on that. I have right here, I have a little straight edge. So I'm just gonna put that down on there nice and light. And I'm going to find out with my caliper plunge measure. That that is basically seven millimeters. That's so that sticks out from the edge of the wheel seven millimeters and because I got a 6.5 millimeters and then there's a thickness of this so I'm calling it seven millimeter extension there and on this side if I do the same thing I know this is probably not most not the most technical way of doing this but it works pretty good on that one I get 16.3 so I'm just going to call that 16 millimeters because of the thickness of this. It doesn't have to be within the millimeter uh, dimensions because I remember we're working with a lawnmower, nothing too technical here. The only measurements that have to be really fairly precise is the measurements that hold these bearings into the wheel. 
on both sides. I do need to make sure that whatever I do, because I do not have an unlimited axle on my lawnmower, and I don't really have to want to have to go buy another one, I'm going to need to make sure that from face to face, this distance between the bearing faces is pretty uniform. So that is about 36 millimeters. That will be fine. And then with the wheel aside, I can measure the bearing. So the flanged bearing is 28.6 millimeters. I'm actually going to go because of the way printing works. I'm actually going to go 29 and a half on this because I remember that when I printed the back wheels as the way my printer worked, it made this uh, hole a little bit smaller than it should have been. And I had to really kind of force these in there. So 29 and a half on that. And let's get a depth on this. Well, let's do the plunge measurement. So my depth on there is seven. And then I also want to know how far it is from the face of this bearing to the edge of the, to the outside edge of that flange, or I guess you'd call that the inside edge of the flange, just roughly, because I remember I need to keep these, this measurement from the outside here to the outside here, the same for my axle to be happy. So I'm going to measure that really fast, just doesn't have to be super precise. It's basically four millimeters. So now I can go back to Design Spark Mechanical. So back here on my Design Spark Mechanical screen, I am going to start by punching a hole straight through the center of this for the axle. And remember, this part does not rub on the axle. This part is just a gap for the axle to run in because the axle will be running on the bearings and the axle itself is 13 millimeters so it's a half inch axle that makes sense i'm going to make the hole through the center more like 18 millimeters uh, so that i make sure that it clears the bearing so i'm going to go ahead and use my circle tool once again and i'm going to make this 18 millimeters and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull this through. So now I have a hole and there's my rudimentary wheel. Now I am going to create kind of a hub. I have to get that offset, inner and outer offset of the wheel set up properly. So I'm going to create what will be on the inside of the wheel, kind of a hub, 45 millimeters in diameter. I got that off the original wheel, by the way. The original wheel hub was 45 millimeters in diameter. And we can change this later, not a big deal. So I'm going to go back to my circle tool, select my plane, I'm going to grab here, and I'm going to go 45 millimeters. And then, because the extension on that is roughly seven millimeters, we might have to mess with this later, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull that up just this part up seven millimeters. Um, that gave me a uh, new center that I can just delete so that I make sure I've got a hole through the center. And then on the far side, I need to get my 16 millimeter indent in there, which I am going to do basically the same way. And remember, we can mess with this later. I'm going to use my circle tool 45 millimeter, and then I'm going to pull it, and I'm going to pull it back in there 17 millimeters. And I can get rid of that little center piece. So now I have the actual offset of the wheel. So on the lawnmower, the wheel will be like this with the lawnmower over here on this side. And then there's basically a bolt or a nut that goes in to hold that on. Now, if I just wanted to create a block wheel like this, I would almost be done. I just need on this side to embed my bearing and also on this side to embed my bearing, which is actually a pretty, pretty easy, pretty quick procedure. So let's go ahead and do that. We need to embed the bearing. Remember, it's a 29.5 millimeter diameter bearing, so we can run that. 
29.5. We run that circle first, so that's where our bearing will sit in there. And the, the barrel of the bearing beneath the flange is seven millimeters, but we need to account for four millimeters of the bearing itself. Okay, so I'm gonna take this down. This is gonna be the seat for my bearing. I'm gonna take this down, seven plus four, which is 11, and then drawing me a new circle on this plane, I'm gonna create an indent to seat the flange in side this hub. So that I'm gonna do at 33 millimeters. So this needs to be 33, which makes just for a flange. And then this is going to be recessed. Just the flange is going to be recessed four millimeters, which in the end, when I get my bearing seated in there completely, so remember the bearing is going to fit right in here. There's my flanged part for the bearing. There's the main barrel of the bearing. And then the hole in the bearing is only 13 millimeters on inside here, but I've just moved this so the plastic is completely out of the way. And as far as the face of the bearing and versus the face of this wheel in the offset, we should be right where we need to be to put the wheel back in the same place it was on the lawnmower originally. Now we're gonna to have to go over here and we're gonna do the same thing on this side. We've already got the offset is set properly. So we are going to create a circle on this plane. Our circle is gonna be 29.5 and then our circle for the flange, I'm going to draw my circle at 33. And then I'm going to pull this inner part down 11 millimeters and pull this outer part down four millimeters, which should put the rotational part of the bearing, the inner part of the bearing, that inner race, should actually be pretty much flush with this offset here. Okay, so now is here where we get to have a little bit of fun. Oh wait, one more measurement we gotta verify. We have got to measure, so with the measure tool, I'm gonna measure from this face to this face, and I need that is my axle length, should read 36, uh, so I'm gonna call it good with 34.5 because two extra millimeters on that axle is not gonna make any difference, especially if the bearings are just a little bit off from what my measurements are. So as far as the wheel goes, this would actually work as it is on the lawnmower right now. It would actually replace, the lawnmower wouldn't know the difference, the functionality would be the same, it would work fantastically. But here's where we get to have a little bit of fun and we get to save ourselves a little bit of print time. So considering that this is diameter 171, I'm gonna leave a little bit out here, full diameter for the wheel. I'm going to take 171 and subtract, let's say 50 from it for 121. Actually, I think now that I look at it, I'm gonna go a little bit further than that, maybe 130. So this part out here, I'm gonna leave as a full size, full width wheel. And this part in here, I'm gonna pull that down. So I'm going to pull that down probably a quarter of this distance. So the distance itself is, the thickness of the wheel is 45 millimeters, basically. So I'm gonna pull this down probably on, let's say 12. Let's try that, pull that down 12. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. So I am going to draw a circle from the center out, 130 millimeters. Then I'm going to pull it into the wheel 
12 millimeters. I got a couple of extra circle parts in there. Now that I think about it on this outside of the wheel, I don't think I'm going to leave the bearing recessed in a hole like that. I think I'm actually going to pull this right up to the face of that other. So if I look at my wheel in cross section here, I can see bearing seated in here, bearing seated in there, pass through for the axle. This part goes against the lawnmower. So that is holding the wheel against the lawnmower by a certain amount of distance. And I still have, if you look with my measurement tool between there and there, I still have 15 and a half millimeters of solid plastic, which is fine. We're going to mess with that a little bit more. Still pretty clunky, pretty, pretty rounded. Um, we're not to that stage yet. We will dress this up a little bit, make it a little bit cleaner looking. So let's move on. Let's do something else to this wheel. Let's create some spokes, which is actually pretty easy. I'm going to create a circle, but I'm going to go from right near. I don't really want it to screw up the integrity of my wheel too much. So I'm going to go from not quite the edge to not quite the edge. Put a 45 millimeter circle in there and then I'm going to duplicate this around the wheel by creating a pattern, a move pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move this. I'm going to go around an axis which is this center axis and then I'm going to have it create a pattern. And then as I move this, you will notice that it gives me patterns. I want to keep a pretty significant amount of plastic in the works here. So I'm only going to go with four holes where I probably could have gone with a few more, but that's fine. And I'm going to set up to pull these one, two, three, four, cut and I'm going to have it pull them through up to that face right there. A little bit off the screen there. Now that's because as it cuts through I don't want my hub of my wheel to get too weak. So then I'm going to take these items right here and pull them straight up to there. So now I have a nice kind of a spoked wheel looking thing uh, which should keep its strength pretty well. It's got plenty of plastic um, on the wheel itself. Actually I think I might increase this by a few millimeters. Let's see if the Design Spark is going to do this for me. Let's take this to a radius of 25 millimeters. There we go. That's a little bit beefier. That'll be nice. So our wheel's looking pretty good. Um, another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put the texture on the face of the wheel, kind of like what you see in the wheel itself. If we look at the wheel one more time, it's got this um, kind of texture line grooves. I'm not going to worry too much about these little edges, but I think I'm going to think I'm going to punch some grooves through there so we'll use one of the same tricks but before I do that I need to make sure that I put a nice curve on this so I'm going to go to pull I'm going to grab the inner and the outer edge here and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull it in until I get a nice curve on there let's say a seven millimeter curve that should be nice. And then I'm going to go ahead and create my pattern for some tread around the wheel by creating a circle along the edge. Now I'm just going to create a circle starting about here. I'm going to make it a 10 millimeter circle. Yes, it's out in thin air. You can see, but that won't matter. 
here in a second because what I'm going to do to turn that into the pattern of the wheel is I'm going to move it and create a pattern again with the move tool move it radially around the center and then create a pattern and then pull it around where it starts all I need to do is get it far enough for it to give me a count down here. And instead of seven, I'm gonna go with 30. So I have 30 of those little circles. And then I'm gonna pull those, all 30 of those surfaces. I'm gonna make sure I put it on a cut. And I'm gonna have it pull all those all the way through the wheel, just like that. And as they done their, as soon as they've done their job, they disappear. So now I have a nice curvature on the edge of the wheel and I have a nice tread pattern in the wheel itself. I also think that I should probably put a curve on this inner part of the wheel would make it look fairly nice. We'll go with a six millimeter curve there, the outer part of the wheel, seven millimeter curve there to match this one. That should be pretty nice. I'm not sure I'm too concerned about this inner part. This is the inside of the wheel anyway, so it's not gonna be seen too much. I think that I'm liking that. Now when I print this, I'm gonna print this probably this way, because if you remember, this is the inside of the wheel it goes against the lawnmower. People can't see that. It might seem like a crazy way to print it, especially in PETG, but um, I'll be able to break apart the supports pretty easily and be able to then have this outer face of my wheel uh, be nice and solid and smooth and looking good to be on the outside of my lawnmower. So first thing I need to do, of course, is make sure I save this. This, of course, is a lawnmower front wheel. And then make sure I save it again. I want to save it as an STL. Pretty much in the same location. So now we go to the Prusa Slicer. So here we are in the Prusa Slicer. I am going to go ahead and bring in my lawnmower wheel SDL file and just drop it on the face here. There we go. I am going to flip this so that it prints other side down. Because remember this side right here is the inside of the wheel. So since I have to do supports either way, I'm just going to have this part have the supports. So I'm going to grab the, that tool, flip it, there we go, looks good. I'm going to make sure that I put my supports on build plate only, it doesn't really matter on this one because there isn't really anywhere else the supports would build. Uh, I think 20% is probably good enough. I'm set for PETG, I generally just use the Prusament profile even though this is I'll be using eSun PETG and a 0.2 millimeter layer is fine with me so let's check it out and see what it looks like so now here we are you'll notice that we are in layer view automatically and we're viewing the sliced layers you can scroll down through them I like to do that to see really kind of what's going on. Looks like the infill would be good. The supports are looking okay so far down the bottom there. But since this is a lawnmower wheel, um, I'm going to look at the perimeters on this one. So if you zoom in a little bit, you can see that there are right now two perimeters around this wheel print. And because it's a lawnmower wheel, I think I'm going to go ahead and raise that up. Under print settings, I'm going to jack that up to four. Sounds good. Should be pretty nice. That's going to make my outer layer uh, 1.6 millimeters thick of plastic. Um, infill looks pretty good. Support and brim, 
I actually like to, on my brim, uh, instead of just one loop, I like to raise that to two loops and then make sure it's two or three layers high on the skirt. Makes it easier for you to pick it, to just pick that skirt with your fingernail or whatever, or get underneath it with your scraper and get that off your print bed after you've done with the print. So I just kind of like to do that. That's uh, something that I do. The speed is probably good. I don't have to change that. Um, these are the temperatures that I usually print at. It's just what came with the Prusament profile. So not a big deal. Nothing changed there. Uh, cooling is part of the profile. Everything's looking pretty good. I don't think I have anything to change here. I got some lift and uh, retraction action. So that's fine. Nothing to change there, nothing to mess with. So back to the platter, do a re-slice it so that it can reset up those new settings that I put in there. Should be pretty quick, pretty easy. So now I've got my four perimeters and same level of infill. Should be pretty good. There's those four all the way around. It's going to, I think, really help with strength. Fairly thick, you know, 1.6 millimeters or more. So let's go down here and take a quick look at the supports. You'll notice that this particular profile, the supports don't actually fill in the whole area, even though there's plastic above it. The Prusa is actually pretty good at uh, bridging. So it usually puts the supports just around the outside where those circles would have printed out in thin air, which is you know really difficult or impossible. But the space between those circles, uh, the Prusa will just bridge and it will actually look pretty nice and be okay. It's kind of cool that it does that because it helps you not have to waste so much plastic on the supports. So that's pretty sweet. Save you some print time. So we'll go all the way down to the bottom. Everything there looks pretty good. Nice curve on the bottom side of that wheel. You will notice that I have pretty much a 17 hour and 36 minute print. We'll see if it estimates that very well, but 1736 is what it's set for. There's the wheel, it's ready to go. Um, there's where my bearing is gonna end up. That looks really good to me. So I'm pretty happy with how that looks. Top, bottom, not a big deal. Everything looks fine. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, send this G code to my Octoprint set up the Prusa. See you on the flip side. So here we have the finished wheel off the print bed. I have not even removed the supports yet, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. For support removal, I generally use a pair of needle nose pliers and an X-Acto knife and whatever else it takes. But you will see that the dimensions worked out pretty well, fits right on there. It's actually pretty much the right thickness. And that if you look at it this way, you can see that I have a extension over here and then it's recessed on this side. So this is the outside of the wheel, so the part that's gonna be seen. The print looks really nice, it's really clean, not a lot of stringing at all. I haven't cleaned anything up here except just taking it off of the print bed. So I am gonna go ahead and clean this up. I'll be right back. So here's my wheel with all the supports removed, actually cleaned up quite a bit. I uh, spent some time with pliers and pulled those supports off and then came off pretty well. For PETG, it's not bad. Uh, PETG always has a little bit better adhesion on the supports than just regular PLA, so you gotta work at them a little bit extra to get them off of there. But remember this whole side right here was totally covered with supports. And even though some of the bridging in here looks a little stringy um, that actually goes on the inside of the lawnmower so this is the face that people would see even though that really doesn't matter i mean who cares what my lawnmower looks like um, i just can mow the lawn with it anyway so here's the original um 
If you remember, our reason for this project entirely was the lawnmower runs this as kind of a plastic bushing that's on a steel axle shaft or axle bolt. So it was actually pretty worn out and the wheel would, as you'd mow the lawn, would wobble back and forth and create extra friction. I'll try to get some shots of this and put it at the end of the video so you can see what I'm talking about. But um, I did design a couple of these last year for the, for the rear wheels, which were bigger, uh, two inches bigger, I believe. So they barely fit on my Prusa bed, but they work just fine. Took 27 hours to print. This one actually ended up printing in a little over 18 hours, even though my estimate from Octoprint was uh, 17 hours. I forgot that I had Octolaps installed, so that adds a couple of two, three seconds uh, to each layer. So I can park the head out of the way and then take a snap to get the Octolaps that I showed earlier in the video. So here it is. Here's my bearings. Um, one of the things that kind of didn't work real well about this is this, for some reason, this bearing hole that is on top where there were no supports is kind of, uh, it's kind of loose, the bearing. You can hear that, it kind of wobbles around in there. So maybe I'll just put that in there, maybe with some epoxy. I'm not going to do another 18 hour print uh, just because that bearing hole ended up off about a, a millimeter or so. But the bearing hole on the back uh, where I had some supports put in there, the bearing pushes in nice and snug. So it works great and won't fall out. So here's my other bearing, with both bearings in there. Just using my fingers as an axle. Look how nicely that spins. So I'm hoping that makes a big difference with my lawnmower. Makes it easier to push. Makes it you know quicker to mow the lawn. Makes everything just fine. Um, I really probably in retrospect, thinking about this um, hole being a little bit sloppy, I probably should have printed a maybe a calibration cube first really fast to make sure my printer was calibrated properly or um, maybe just printed this piece of the wheel, just this little tiny part of the hub, pulled that out with my measurements and, and done some dry fitting on that before I spent 18 hours printing uh, this wheel. But I'm pretty sure this will be okay with just some epoxy or something in there. It'll be fine. Plus, it will have a little bit of tension on it this way from the axle on the lawnmower, so it shouldn't wobble around too much. It should be okay. should get away with it. Plus, it's just a lawnmower, so it should work fine. Having two of these wheels on the back of my lawnmower already for a year, I can tell you this PETG is plenty strong for the task. Some people might ask, why didn't I print this in ABS? And my simple answer is, um, I don't really like printing ABS because as you notice with my printers back here, there's the Prusas right there and then there's the Maker Select right there. And my Prusa is right now printing another wheel because you gotta have you know two front wheels for the lawnmower. Um, but neither of my printers are in an enclosure of any kind. The Prusa does print ABS just fine and I actually have some ABS, um, but I didn't wanna try to cobble together an, an enclosure to create something like this that was uh, fully enclosed so it wouldn't warp. And right now, the room that I'm in, the space that I'm in, there is actually a, an air conditioner vent that blows really near my Prusa. So that could have created some kind of problem uh, for my ABS. And so I just decided not to do this with ABS. And I've had really, really good luck with PETG. This particular PETG is eSun PETG, just standard black eSun. Um, and if you want to know why I use eSun, I did a whole review on eSun. Like, I kind of love that brand. It works really well for me. I've never had any trouble with it. And sometimes not having any trouble is the best thing to have. So anyways, uh, that's about it for this episode of Grim 3D. It was a great Grim engineering project to redesign this wheel with basically the same working dimensions so that I could put this on my lawnmower, but make sure that this time it had bearings instead of just a plastic bushing on a metal axle bolt. So um, I know these work better. I'm pretty excited to have four of these on my lawnmower. Uh, and that's about it for this episode of Grim 3D. Make sure you subscribe if you want to. That'd be great. Smash the like button. Ring the bell.
We'll see you out there.